Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Today is Father's Day. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, when God created us, He started with a man, a father. There was a purpose behind the creation, and the purpose was for the family. God did not just create Adam and Eve just for fun. There was a purpose behind that. I'm going to speed up to this point and say there is a massive attack against the family. Massive attack against especially fathers. And for us Christians who are aware of what's going on, we know that uh, this is the end of time. Yes. If fathers are attacked, that means the structure of the house, the foundation of the house, is attacked as well. We live a time where there is an acceleration in everything. Acceleration in good things, for sure, but as well, acceleration in bad things. Yes. It's like when you fertilize your, your, your backyard, everything that is there will profit from that. It will grow. So you have to come and remove what is bad. Because they profit from the vitamins you're putting down there. So everything is in acceleration right now. Hallelujah. Amen. But what we have been experienced uh, this time, the attacks on family, the attacks on the foundation of the family, it's it, there is a confusion, actually. If you talk to kids, especially at school and stuff like that, they are very confused when you talk about a family. They, they don't have the picture of the family the same way that you and I have. The same way that God has intended the picture of the family. That confusion, it's, it's orchestrated with one intent. To bring to destroy the family, to bring it down. And it starts with the fathers. Hallelujah. Many people today, if you ask them to define a marriage, many of them will not say the marriage is between a man and a woman. They will say, oh, that's a traditional marriage. <laughs> oh, those are the things the 2,000 years ago. There is nothing traditional. That's the definition of the marriage. That was the God's intent. Yes. Today, you see so many um, combinations. It's not the man and the woman. As we know, uh, now it's the man and men, and the man and the woman, and then the man inside and the woman outside, and man. I mean, any kind of whatever you can think about it. Hallelujah. It is what it is. Hallelujah. But we just have to be careful. We are not in heaven yet. Amen? Amen. We are not in heaven yet. I'm just here this morning to say that man and the woman are different. Right. Yep, they are different. They were not the same at creation. They are not the same now. And they will not be the same ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I know when we talk about differences between men and women, uh, some will say, oh, men are higher than women, and then women, no. That's not what I'm talking about. The Bible says, nobody is higher than the other. Nobody is superior. Nobody is better. They are just not the same. If you read the Bible, the first book in the Bible called Genesis. That's where the creation started. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says the woman was taken from the man. Isn't it what it says? Okay. The woman, if you don't know, was taken from the man. Eve was taken from Adam. Which means the woman was removed from Adam. Amen. Amen. Okay. I, I, I understand you may be confused still. I, I'm, I'm going to repeat it. 
the woman was taken out of the man. Yes. That means there is no woman in the man. True. Are you still confused? Yeah. I know everything that we learn left and right bring people into confusion. If it happens, you stand in front of your mirror and you see something that you did not want to see. Hallelujah. There is no need to go see a surgeon to add or remove. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. There is no adding or any removing to look like a, a person you are not. Yes. What you have is what you have. Yes. And that's the person you are. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. <clears throat> adding or removing will not change what is inside. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. There is no woman in you if you are a man. The woman has been taken from the beginning. Yes. That's it. Yeah. You have the right to think. You. <laughs> Thank you. you. You have the right to think whatever you want. You have the right to like whatever you, you want. But you will not change what God has created. Yes. You are free to do what, whatever you want to do. I do have friends, okay, who think otherwise. I, I love them. I respect them. They know my opinions. Yeah. I know their opinions. Yeah. And we respect each other that way. Yeah. I'm not going to change the Bible. I'm not going to change my faith to please a person. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I am a believer and I am a true believer. Yeah. And I represent God. Yeah. And I'm saying there is no woman in a man. The woman has been taken from the man. Yes. The Bible does not say God took half. No, God took all and make Eve. Amen. There is no Eve in Adam anymore. Amen. God did not create Adam and Steve. It was Adam and Eve. So it's okay if you think otherwise. Amen? We as a Christian, as I always say, our doors are open for everyone. If you think otherwise, you are welcome in our church. We love you. Hey, Jesus came for all of us sinners. Amen. In a hospital, what do you, th what do you think you're going to find in a hospital? People are sick. Hallelujah. So in a church, it's totally normal to find all sinners. Yes. Your sin is not greater than mine. Hallelujah. We always make mistakes. When a person does not look like you or is confused, you think that his sin is greater than yours. All sins are the same. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. You have to love everyone, embrace everyone, but you have to tell people, this is an abomination. Yes. That's what the Bible says. Hallelujah. Ah, this time is very difficult. It is very difficult for our children. People are very confused. In the book of Genesis, we learn that it started from the beginning. The first time God got very mad and destroyed a city called Sodom and Gomorrah. It because of these kind of things. Abraham pleaded with God not to destroy his nephew's family. God said, okay, I'm not going to do that. Ask him to get out of the city because I am going to destroy everything. He sent two angels over there. The people in the city, they knew what was going on. They came to the house of Lot. Say, we need those two people out. We are going to gang rape them. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 19. That was what they wanted to do to the angels. <laughs> Hallelujah. And those were men outside. And the angel that were sent were men as well. Amen? Amen? And God destroyed every single thing, every single human being in the Bible. So when we read, we do not skip certain things. They may not please what we hear outside, but we have to read and we have to talk about those things. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It is difficult for our children. Amen. Amen. Some fathers, they have no say in the house. No say. 
what they need to do is just go work, bring the money because we're going to eat. But in the house, the father has no say. The father was intentionally and purposely designed to lead the house. To lead the house. The absence of a father is, is, is just devastating for the kids. Terrible. I read a study from Edward Crock that says fatherless children develop with so many problems. The first one is behavioral problems. 71% of dropouts in school are the fatherless children. It's true. Yes. Yes. 85% of the youth in prison were fatherless. 85%. 85%. And actually, when you look at the population of men in prison, up to 80, 85% of those people did not have fathers as well. So the compass is out. It's terrible. The father figure is not there. The father is the foundation of your house. You remove the foundation, your house will go down. A simple wind will bring everything down. Absolutely. Teen pregnancy, drugs, and all these mental health disorders are all related to the absence of the father. So it is crucial when we have a time like this to talk about those things. Father, you have a voice in your house. No one will silence you in your house. If you give up, it's the entire generation that will come after you that you have given up to. Our children are becoming more and more disrespectful, rebellious, uh, because the devil had found a way to attack the foundation, attack you, the father. And the fathers are, cannot take it anymore, many of them. Because whatever you want to do, whatever you want to say, you may end up in prison. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 3, in the LT uh, version says, Children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord. For this is the right thing to do. Honor your father and your mother. This is the first command, uh, commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and your mother, things will go well for you, and you will have a long life on earth. I mean, it cannot be clearer than this. Hallelujah. Amen. This means for me that fathers get to affect how well and how long the children will live. Fathers, you have the power to affect how long and how well your children will live. You can have a, a bad, long life. Hallelujah. Amen. Or a somehow good but very short life, depending on your relationship with your fathers. Children does not mean all the small kids only. Some of us have parents. Amen? Amen. So the secret to a long life, a very fulfilled life, is to have a very good relationship with your parents. Obey your parents. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How well you live and how long you live depend on that relationship that you have with your parents. And God is clearly saying here that rebellion is the only thing he does not want you to do. Because rebellion has nothing to do with honor, like we just read, has nothing to do with respect, obedience. Rebellion, you know, sometimes kids want to look like other kids. Oh, what, what do you want? Or what do you know? You know, they just want to be cool and, and look like other kids. You know, they have pants up down here, you know? And then the belt, I don't know if they, they put the belt on the, the underwear. I don't know where the belt is. <laughs> I don't know what you have to, to retain. They should probably, I don't know, they should retain the underwear. Or whatever, they just want to look like the other uh, child. It's just rebellion. Not knowing that the other child maybe does not have a father, 
maybe life is already a mess, but they just want to be cool. Being cool is look like the other child. Hallelujah. I see smiles and I see some of us used to be cool. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I won't tell you how cool I was. <laughs> we, we're going to just leave it that way. <laughs> but many of us were cool. Yeah, we're cool. Today, if, if they show to your, your son, your pictures are the same age. Man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Fathers. Fathers. Yes. We have a lot to do. Yes. Hallelujah. So rebellion will lead us to a miserable life. A short life. Definitely for sure. A rebellion is like a double-edged uh, sword. Here, it will shorten your life. And here, you have a miserable life. So you, you, you cannot even choose one side or the other. You just to get away from there. Amen. Amen. Let's get to um, what I wanted to talk about today. I need to to a little introduction. Uh, if you can uh, display Luke 15, chapter 11 to 31, we will talk about the parable of the lost uh, son. And I'm going to read uh, uh, quickly here. Verse 11, Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out of a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arm around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it in on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his, on his feet. Bring the fattened uh, calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For the son of mine was dead and now is alive again. He was lost and now he is found. So they began to celebrate. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we just read that the father had two sons. The younger one came one day to his father. He wanted to be cool. He wanted to look like others. He said, Father, I need my share of inheritance. He asked for his inheritance before the dad dies. Inheritance is not something they give you when the person is still alive. Every one of us has a will where you say, if I die, uh, this is what I, I want my things to go. You can give to whoever you want. Most of the time, you give to your kids. So definitely the father was shocked that the son is asking for his inheritance before himself dies. Hallelujah. Amen. 
The son did not wait for the right time to ask for his inheritance. Hallelujah. Amen. So the son focused to something he was not entitled to. You are not entitled to an inheritance if the person you're going to inherit from is still alive. Hallelujah. Because technically, everything belongs to him. It will belong to you once he passes away. Hallelujah. Amen. The son asked for something he was not entitled to. You cannot be entitled to something you are not eligible for. If eligibility has not been established yet, there is no entitlement. Am I right? Am I right? Yes. Hallelujah. I am right. I know I'm right. Yes. Hallelujah. I know uh, we have a few Africans uh, <laughs> fathers here. If your son comes and says, Father, uh, forget about the wheel. Just give me my part right now and then uh, <laughs> I'm on my way. It will be terrible. <laughs> hey, you want to kill me? <laughs> hey? Even talking about the wheel is, is already a problem. So asking for inheritance, hallelujah. The father will say, okay, this is witchcraft. You want to kill me. You are asking for my inheritance. But that means you want to kill me. If they give you a gun, I'm dead. You, you don't care about me. Am I right? Am I right? Yes. Our Father, God our Father, always goes beyond and above. Even if when we're doing something wrong, the prodigal's father did not get upset. He did not curse the son. He did not do anything. He was not even offended. Everyone will be offended by that audacity of asking for your share of inheritance while the dad is still alive. You can be killed just by saying or asking those kind of things. But what we see here, the father gave. Hallelujah. The father gave. Even if the request was something out of the mind, the father gave. Hallelujah. Here, the prodigal's father, uh, father is an image of God. And I'm here to tell you, God will always give. God will always give. How many of us go to God to ask for a blessing? Or oh, they pray, even though they don't attend any service, they do all the things wrong. Um, I mean... How many, I, I do receive many text messages asking me to pray for this, pray for a test, even a road test. Uh, you should study, right? <laughs> pray for an immigration hearing. Pray, pray for everything. A doctor's appointment. And we always pray. Those are very good requests, no problem. Hallelujah. But do you always, always remember God when you're in trouble already? When do you remember about the prayer? Is when you are in need, when you're in prayer, when you want to look like, uh, when you want to be cool, you want to go? Is that the time you go to ask requests? Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. There is nothing wrong about praying when you're in trouble. Actually, you should. If you don't, I don't understand. <laughs> eh? you, uh, honestly, between and me, you should. Yes. Hallelujah. But I'm, I'm giving images so you understand what is the right time for everything. Amen. One time, uh, Pastor Sabit and I, we went to, to the hospital to pray for people. So we were going from one room to another. You knock here, you say, okay, can we pray for you? And then one time I heard, uh, no, no, I just need magazines. Okay, so we went around looking for magazine, and then we, bring, we brought magazines, and the person was happy, right? In another room, we found two, two guys. One was super quiet, closer to the door, and then on the other side, there was a, a, um, um, a construction guy. He fell from all over the place, boom, and then they brought him to the hospital. And then when we asked if we could pray, he was super happy. 
<laughs> and then he told us the story how he is alive still and uh, so many things. The other guy was not interested. We asked him, can you, no, 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 I'm okay. So, the guy on the other side who was sick actually ministered to us and, and to his friend. Really. And he prayed and we prayed for him. And on our way out, the other guy <laughs> said, <coughs> <laughs> and then he said, pardon me? And then he said, okay, you know, I'm going to go for a heart surgery. My chances to live are very slim. Would you pray for me too? Amen. Hallelujah. And my brother here and I and a few other people, we prayed for him. Hallelujah. We do not know if he made it out, but we believe he did. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm not saying not to pray when it's not a good time, not to request when it's not a good time. Our Father will always give. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. The prodigal father, which is the image of our God, he knew his son will waste. When you, when you ask for something where it's not time yet, the motivation is wrong. Whatever you're going to do is wrong. It's not time yet. Which means the prodigal's father knew the son will waste what he was going to give them. He knew it was not time yet. He knew the son was not entitled to yet. He knew all of that. But yet, he gave. My question to you is, what have you been asking God lately? And you have not received yet. Hallelujah. Do not be quiet. <laughs> the presence of the Lord is here. Amen. What have you been asking God and he has not responded yet? Hallelujah. Amen. Let me pray this morning that the God you have been asking a blessing or anything remembers you today. Amen. Remembers you today. Amen. He remembered the prodigal son and he gave knowing this is going to be wasted. But you are wise than the prodigal son. And then the, the, the father, I pray that he remembers you. I pray that he remembers your prayers. Amen. Your prayers are not only for yourself. Amen. Most of the time, they are for others. Yes. I pray that God remembers your prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Maybe the father gives you, even for something you are not entitled to yet. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. Gives you and guides you. So you use it appropriately. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't care if eligibility has been established or not. Father will make you entitled. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In Jesus' name, my sister. Amen. Tap into it. That's how you get miracles. Amen. Hallelujah. I know some of us will question the prodigal's father saying, why do you give inheritance you're not dead yet why do you give knowing this guy will just go and spend and uh, he's crazy why do you do that but what about you my brother what about you my sister eh? every morning God wakes you up Amen. Ah, you won't thank him yeah. and he knows this person is not going to thank me God knows that. And then gives you, um, wakes you up, strengthens you, and you go, do you know how many people buy, uh, die every second? Yeah. Hmm? Closer to 20 people every second. 10, 10, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, every second. By you, you wake up, take everything for granted, you go. God gives you Jesus. life, and you won't thank him. And God knows that. Every month, God blesses you financially. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. And some of the money, you're going to waste them doing whatever. Hallelujah. God knows I am blessing this person, and this person is now going to support my work. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. That is difficult. 
Amen. Amen. So you look like the prodigal's uh, father. Amen. Though no question about that. Because we demand, we ask from God. But we don't always deserve and we don't always manage what God gives us. Hallelujah. Jesus. All those blessings, sometimes we don't even deserve them. We do not work from for. Yes. We, we, it's just a blessing. Hallelujah. A, a favor. It's a favor. God favors you and gives you uh, today and then gives you again tomorrow. And knowing that you're going to cheat, you'll be unfaithful, you'll be uncommitted, you're going to be selfish, you, you'll be unwilling to serve, and so on and so on. God knows all of that, but God keeps giving you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Especially women, God will bless you. Amen. And behind his back, Amen. you're talking all the bad things against the other lady, oh, she's tall, oh, she's this, oh, look at the shoes, oh, this, is a, this bag is whatever it is, uh, and stuff like that. You gossip, and knowing, and, and you want God to bless you. Yes. Sometimes when you look, Sister Sissy, and then you start praying, <laughs> according to what you just, you, you just saw there. It's true. Hallelujah, I see this uh, fancy bag over there, and then I pray. Eh? I need a Valentino too. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So the son receives his part of inheritance. And what do you think the son does? Child, the son got his money and the son leaves the house. The Bible says he went as far as he, he could. And he had a reckless life. I mean, it was uh, partying every day, every single day. Many of us parents will not give. And if you do, then you bring a financial advisor, you bring a lawyer, just in case this guy comes back again. You, you took your part, what do you want? <laughs> Hallelujah. Just to prevent any future claim from the same son, you're going to see your insurance company. <laughs> Eh? Or to see your, your uh, paralegal, or whatever it is, to remove him from, from the, the will. He, he took his part. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I, I know I'm talking to parents who are torn apart. Your belief and then what your children are doing. Some of them are very rebellious and you do not know what to do. You worry. You stress a lot. And in this situation, you're going to be stressed because it will take half of what you worked for your entire life. You are stressed. In the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 28, it says, If you are tired from carrying heavy burdens, come to me and I will give you rest. If you are stressed from a situation that you're going through, caused by a reckless life of your children or anything they have, have been involved in because they want to look cool, you have no other things to do than to go back to God. Because God says, if you are tired from carrying heavy burdens, come to me and I will give you rest. The young man left the house and he went and he wasted all the money Recklessly, that's what the Bible says. When you have money, and especially in this situation, you're gonna have a lot of friends. Oh yeah, everyone wanna be your friend because you're the one who provides. You buy this, you buy that, you bring people to the movie, everyone is in your fancy car. You have lots of friends. And all the beautiful women. I don't know why women come when there is money. I have no idea. But we have noticed that. Hallelujah. If there is no woman around you, you're poor. <laughs> money made him very popular. But the Bible says, because of his reckless life, he lost all the money. 
And then when you lose money, guess what? You lose friends as well. Yes. One by one by one, they will go. They won't even say hi to you anymore. <laughs> the same speed they came in, at the same speed, they will leave you. Yes. Actually, it was not even you, it was the money. Hallelujah. When money is finished, friendship is gone. And all the, the admirers are gone. Love is gone. Joy is gone. So the young person we are studying today lost his money, lost his situation, lost his friends, everything. It was over. Done. But God is God even of the lost people. Yes. The Bible says... He came to his senses. He realized that I have no money. I need to do something. I need to find a job. So he went in a different country to find a job. He could not find any job. But he secured a, a job to feed the pigs. This is a Jew person. Kosher person does not eat pigs, does not even touch them. But that's how low he went. And his job was to feed the, pig, the pigs. If you work, you'll have a salary and you will eat from your salary. But the guy was already hungry. And he even asked, can I have some of the, the food I am providing to the pigs? They said, no. You wait for your income, buddy. Eh? There is no advance on income here. Even the pigs did not share the food with him. <laughs> Hallelujah. No one gave him food. It is in this desperate moment, it is in this difficult time that you have to go back to God. Even if you have done terrible things, you just go back to God and say, I mess it up. I need your wisdom. I need help. He cried out to God. And the Bible says, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I know I've done terrible things. I'm not worthy to be called his, his son anymore. But forgive me. I, I need to eat. I need to live. He decided to go back to his dad's house. You really have to understand here that when you do such terrible things, going to your dad's house is, is out of the question. It's not something you're supposed to do. Because they can kill you. Honor is very important. In this region, they kill for, for nothing. So a person who has disrespected his father has to be killed. But the son says, I need to go. He has asked for forgiveness. And then here he, go he goes. Hallelujah. You have to understand that we are not talking about all of this just for fun. The world can abandon you. But God will not. Amen. You may feel abandoned, depressed. No one wants you. No one likes you. You have lost everything. There is no any other way out. But I'm telling you this morning, there is one. Yes. You just have to open up to God. The son did not say, I wronged my father. He, he said, I sinned against heavens and against my dad. Because whatever he was doing was against heaven as well. So whatever situation you may be in, you are depressed because of something you did. Maybe you did something terribly wrong. It's not a problem. You just have to turn back and go to God because you have wronged God. And God can clean that up and then rehabilitate you again. That is what happened to the son. 
Psalm 37, uh, 25 says, As long as I can remember, good people have never been left helpless, and their children have never gone begging for food. Hallelujah. Do you understand? This son reached the bottom of the bottom of everything. But yet, God reached out to him. Hallelujah. Oh, let me tell you this morning. Let your enemies talk against you. Let people point the fingers. Oh, he, he killed uh, his cousin. Oh, he, you know, he's the guy who, who stole. You no, know. let people say all of that. Let people say you are a loser. He cannot do anything in his, he has never accomplished anything. Let them do that. Because at that time, they do not understand one thing. You are in a pit probably. And there is no pit deeper than the pit where this guy was. To ask for the food he's giving pigs, and they said, no, 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 you are not entitled to. That's the bottom of the bottom of everything. As I said, even the pigs could not share the food with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Regardless of that pit, your enemies will talk, people will talk. I know one lady who was, I don't know what happened in his family. She could not go back to see his parents. She could not go back because something has happened with the dad or whatever, and she was mad. And then she refused to go back. But she was, she was um, on pills due to depression because the person wouldn't have the courage of calling the, the, the family where they, they were living and then ask for forgiveness or something. And then the person, I saw that the person was very depressed, unable to work. And then when I talked with them a little bit, I understood that. I said, is that right? Okay, call your dad. Impossible, I can't. It has been five years, that's okay. Call your dad. What am I gonna tell him? Ask for forgiveness. But he is the one who wronged me. But who cares? Call your dad and ask for forgiveness. In any problem, it's always two people. You have your side. Maybe 30%, 70%. Uh, hey, clean up your 30% at least. Yes. The person listened to me, called the dad, asked for forgiveness. For hours, they started crying. And all the problems were over. It became again a family. Regardless of the situation you, you're going through, you have to humble yourself. And then say, you know what, I am going to humiliate myself, but I am going to ask for, for, for forgiveness. Jesus. Name something wrong you did. Name it. Amen. How, how can you ask for forgiveness for something you are not naming? Oh God, you know that thing I did? No. Name it and then ask for forgiveness. And God will forgive you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The same thing happened to this person. Regardless of all the problems, the person had the courage of saying, God, I wronged you. I asked for an inheritance I was not entitled to. I messed it up. I disrespected my dad in front of everyone. But this is the bottom of the bottom. I am coming in front of you again asking for forgiveness. Would you forgive me? Hallelujah. So he decided to go back. He said, slaves in my dad's house, they have food, they eat. And me, nothing. So he went back to his house. It says here, the father sees the son and runs to him. Let's stop there for a moment. Obviously, this father had properties. He had stuff. He was not poor. The son had left for a long time. The son is in danger if he comes back. You don't just come back home. Oh, I'm here. They, they will kill you. Everyone knows you disrespected your father. Everyone knows that. So you don't just come back like a tourist. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
you have to understand that this kind of property is it's not just a small house. There is so many people working there. But the Bible says the father saw him. And the father runs to him. Based on what the, 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 the boy has done, he did not deserve to be welcomed. He did not. He did not deserve any attention at all. Many fathers, even if those who are nice, they want to welcome you back, they will check what you're bringing back. It's true. Hey, it's true. if you come back with twice, three times, four times what the father has given you, that is a different, totally different story. Because you can give back to the father what he gave to you. But this guy here is broke. He's coming home bro completely broke. And I can imagine he, he's frail because of lack of food. Hallelujah. But the Bible says the father recognized him. He was a good candidate to be stoned. And the first to stone him should have been the dad. He disrespected the, the dad. You don't ask for inheritance before the person passes. And now you have the nerve to come home. Hallelujah. But here, you understand that the father was watching for the son. How did the father saw the, 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 see the, the son? How? You can imagine that this son, when he left the house, he was in good health. When he came back, he was about to die. But the son, the father, was watching for his son. Yes, my son wronged me. But I cannot sleep. This father was not sleeping. He probably placed himself to a place where he could see what was happening. For sure for the love of his son. But secondly, if you want your son to still be alive, you better be the first one to see him. Hallelujah. And that's the reason he started running. Yes, he was running to the son because he was happy. But he was running as well to be the first to get there. You, you have to read things spiritually. True. Why would you run? He, he took your money. And he comes home empty-handed. What are you running for? Hallelujah. The father chose to express his love. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. With God, his love does not pick and choose. God's love is unconditional. Yes. If you think you have done something wrong and you cannot present yourself in his presence, let me tell you, God's love is unconditional. Yes. If you have changed your appearance to look like a person you are not, that is not a problem. God looks at the inside, not the outside. And his love is unconditional. Yes. He will embrace you the way you are. Yes. That is not a problem. The, the joy of having the son back was greater than any offense that the son has done. The, son ra the father runs to meet his son, to embrace him, to forgive him, but also to protect him. Are you in a situation of unforgiveness toward a family member, toward a, a son or a daughter who disrespected you and left the house? Are you in that situation? A son who wronged you. Today, I'm asking you to open your heart and to forgive. Jesus. I'll open your heart and forgive. Like my friend did, give a call to those who wronged you. You did not wrong them, they wronged you. Call them. Release yourself by forgive, forgiving them. That allows God to operate in your own life. The son qualified to be stoned by anybody. But the father, who was not sleeping anymore since the son had left the house, was on the watch, checking when the son will come. Because if I'm now the first to see the son, something can happen to my son. And he was the first there before anybody else noticed the son. He was there. And then he says, bring clothes. 
So that means the guy who was like a homeless. Hallelujah. Am I right? Yes. And on top of everything, he threw a party. Yes. Let's eat and drink and dance. Yes. Because my son who was lost, now he is found. Yes. Hallelujah. This is what happened to us when you go outside of God's way. God is on the watch for you. Amen. God is, is asking when are you going to come back? When are you going to take a decision to come back? And he's going to throw a party. All the angels will be singing because you came back home. Amen. Hallelujah. This story of the prodigal son is really the story of the prodigal's father. It is not the actions of the son that move me, it's the actions of the father. Yes. It's what the father has done, what behavior the father has done, knowing that the son disrespected him. Brothers and sisters, the call is your call now. What do you do when people have disrespected you, have wronged you, you are mad? What do you do when you, you are sending money to your cousin overseas to help you build your house? And then when you come, your cousin disappears. <laughs> what do you do? You are supposed to come to the airport to pick you up. <laughs> Nobody. And no house. Nothing. What do you do? Do you curse them? Do you pray every day for the fire to come from heaven? <laughs> or do you just forgive them and move forward? What you just don't know, it hurts terribly in here because someone took what you worked for for so many years. Hallelujah. But if you pray, you put them in the hands of God, God will reward you again. God will replace all those things again. Most of us escape genocide or all the kind of killings that were going on. All our belongings were taken by neighbors, by whoever. Hallelujah. I told you, I know people living in my house. I know them. They live in my house. It's not their house. It's my house. Hallelujah. God replaced all those things and gave even more. Everything that has been taken, God multiplied by 10. And then gave me new things. Hallelujah. New things. All the family members that were killed, God replaced them. One, two. I mean, I cannot even count people who are here. Those are my brothers and my sisters. I love you the same way I loved my brothers and my sisters that were kill killed. Yeah. Hallelujah. This story is the story of the father. What I want you, today is Father's Day, definitely for sure. Amen. That is the example that we have to, f to follow. The father gave, uh, prodigal means to, to give extravagantly. I mean, out of proportion. That is the love that God gives us. Out of proportion, unconditionally. Amen. Amen. Something you did not merit, unmerited grace, just give you. Unsolicited mercy, just give you. Salvation. Did you work hard for your salvation? Eh? God found you where you were, picked you up, and then you were saved. No condition, nothing, no restriction. Amen. Amen. We always sing here. There is no limit to the length that God is willing to go. To go find you. To go embrace you. There is no mountain too high that our God cannot climb. Go looking for you. Is any what we sing here? Amen. 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 The Bible says, even in the valley of the shadow of death. You understand? Even in the valley, oh my goodness, so that's uh, terrible. Even where, if you are there, God will always be with you. You just have to open your mouth and cry out to him. Amen. Today, for those who are here, God is talking to you in Hebrew chapter 13, verse 5, in the Amplified uh, Classic Version. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree Leave you helpless, now forsaken, 
not let you down. God says three times, I will not leave you, I will not um, leave you helpless. I will not let you down. Regardless of what you have been involved in, regardless how bad you, you have done, maybe you are the one who took your brother's money, he's sending to you, and then, he, you know, he, I don't know. Regardless of that, amen, God can still forgive you and then help you move forward again. You just have to come forth and ask for forgiveness. Jesus. In this parable we just read, there is one thing that I have to point out. The father did not go look for the lost son. Have you noticed that? Yeah. He did not go. He stayed home. He was probably on a watch, looking for his son, checking to see when the son will come. But he did not go look for the lost son. Because the son has his own will. I choose to ask for inheritance. I choose to finish all the money, to play with women. And you have a will. You choose what you want. Yeah. Hallelujah. But the father was home, was hoping, just hoping for his return. And eventually the son came back. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the same thing happened with us and God. You have a will, I have a will. You choose what direction you're going. Yesterday, I attended a, a celebration of life for my aunt that I just lost in Edmonton, another family member. And then the pastor was preaching and said, in the end, when you die, there will be a judgment day. It depends on your choice. So you have a will. You choose either I go this way or I go the other way. No one will force you. We will tell you the consequence of choosing here or there. Hallelujah. But that's a choice we do while we are still alive. This son here did not wait until he's, he's dead. No. He made a choice before. Let's humble myself and choose to go one way instead of the other way. The same thing will happen to us when we die, you're gonna, when you're still here, you have to choose where you're gonna go. I mean, this is a privilege. God gives you a privilege to choose knowing the consequences of your choice. Hallelujah. The father did not go look for the son. The son chose what he wanted to do. Come back or not. If you come back, then God will manifest himself and it will forgive you. If you do not take that step of going and ask for forgiveness, you know, <laughs> it's your choice. You have a choice, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. You have a choice to decide to come back. Amen. If you come back, you receive Jesus. Things we struggle with, anything we struggle with, Jesus went to the cross for. Hallelujah. As I'm talking, maybe the Holy Spirit is shining some light in all these things you're struggling with. It could be disease or any kind of things. Jesus went to the cross and died for. You may not be the prodigal. You might be maybe a minister in the church, a leader, maybe a visitor. Today, I'm asking you to come home. You need to come home. Brothers and sisters, you need to come home. Amen. I do not know what you're struggling with. I do not know your situation. Yes. But what I know, when you decide to come home, God Almighty, who is on the watch, yes. waiting for you to come home, he will run to embrace you. He will run to give you a, a nice suit. He will run to throw a party for you. But you need to come home. Amen. The Father did not go to look for the, the son everywhere. He waited for the son to take a decision to come home. Hallelujah. I don't know what area of your life you're struggling with. It could be job, it could be forgiveness, it could be salvation maybe, a sickness. Maybe not you, but a family member that you know you have been praying for. You need to come home. 
That is the only medication that I can give you. Come home. The prodigal, the prodigal son asked to be a slave. I want to come home, ask for forgiveness, and be a slave. Because a slave has food, a slave has a place to live in my father's house. That's all the, the prodigal uh, son was looking for. But that prayer was rejected immediately by the father. Because it was minimizing his son. It was belittling his son. It was reducing his son to the level of a slave. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Can I talk about you? Amen. Hmm? Yes. Yes. Our prayers. How kind of prayer do you pray? What, what kind of prayer? We pray for God to accommodate us in whatever we're struggling with. Father, I have my left leg that is really painful. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the pain that I have in my right leg is killing me. Father, if at least you could remove this pain in my right leg, I could maybe walk like this, but I will get where I'm going. Because this pain over here is really killing me. Father, will you do that for me? Our prayer is an accommodation. God, accommodate me in whatever I'm struggling with. Hallelujah. Jesus. Amen. Am I right? Yes. Am I right? Yes. We do not pray for God to, to save us. Hallelujah. To raise us up. To change our situation. We do not pray for that. We pray God to accommodate us in what we're doing. Hallelujah. I will walk with one leg. I will, I will get where I'm going. As long as the pen that I have here is gone. Brothers and sisters, pray for God to touch you. Pray for God to heal you. Amen. You are not going to walk like a handicapped person. You're going to walk properly. You're going to run. Amen. That is what we have to pray for. Amen. The prodigal son prayed to be a slave. I'm going to go back to my father's house and be a slave. So I can eat. I can, I can have a place to, li to live. But our Father, we reject your prayer. Say, Son, you are home. You wronged me, but you asked for forgiveness. You came home. I will bring you back in the home, and I will find another inheritance for you. Even if the first one, I don't know what you did with, that is not a problem. Our Father will never bless you to a level that is not your level. We are God's son. If we are killers, robbers, um, whatever it is, when you humble yourself and you come back into the presence of the Lord, he embraces you and he throws a party. He gives you the best like nothing has happened. Amen. The father rehabilitated him fully and completely without condition. The father did not say, okay, son, okay. Before everything else, sit down. What did you do with the money? What, what, what do you have? Okay, check, check him. Check his pockets. He did not even have clothes. They had to give him clothes. There was no condition. That is what the father will do for you too. There is no condition. You just come back. There is no condition. Hallelujah. I heard the story of this pastor. He was a, in a, one of the gangs in New York, killing people, terrible. And then one day he encountered Jesus. And then he was shocked. The doors were opened. No condition. He goes on TV, I killed people. I killed them. I'm sorry, God forgive me. No condition. He has a huge ministry. He's used by God. A person who was killing some others were doing other stupid things. Hallelujah. All that the son needed to do was to walk toward his family home. Hallelujah. I heard the story of this person as well. Uh, it was in Africa. Um, they were against churches. They were burning churches, killing people. 
That day, um, there was a crusade, and then they had these huge tents outside. So he prepared himself with his gang members to go there and kill people. He entered into the, the place that was packed with grenades, ready to, to finish everyone. They positioned themselves. He was the, the, the boss. And then all the, the, the guys were waiting for his signal to start shooting at people. As long as the pastor, uh, whatever the pastor was praying for, was touching him, was talking to him, he said, I don't understand why this guy is talking to me. He got to the point where he was unable to do anything. When there was an altar call, he was the first to go. Ah. The first. Come on. So he went to the altar, he opened, he took his grenades, and then his Kalashin cough and everything, he put down there. Now all the other people who were with him, I said, okay, what is, what is happening here? Hallelujah. He came to kill, but he was the one killed right there. Now he works, he is he, a preacher. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And that's his, his testimony. Whatever you have been involved in, just come home. Amen. Come home. Come home for yourself. Come home for your family members. Whatever you are struggling with, physical, whatever it is, Jesus died on the cross for. In order for you to tap into that, you just have to come home. This son came home. On his way home, the dad went to meet him. I pray this morning that if you come home from afar, God will see you and they will come to embrace you. You just have to humble yourself and say, God, I don't know what's going on. It could be even a disease. It could be a problem in your body. So, God, you did not create this problem for me. I want to come home. In your presence, there is liberty. In your presence, there is health. I'm coming home. Hallelujah. All you need to do if you're here is to come home. The altar is your home. You walk home. Walk home to benefit from what God has for you. Hallelujah. If you, have, if you are in need of everything, all that you have to do is open your mouth and express it. The prodigal son opened his mouth and expressed his needs. For sure, it was forgiveness first. Secondly, make me even a slave. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We have to think big. We have to dream big. We have to ask big. Yes. Amen. I pray this morning to eradicate any slave's mentality where you pray for God to accommodate you in whatever you are suffering from. Amen. Hallelujah. Headaches are fine, but the problem with my eyes, God, at least if you could take that away. Brothers and sisters, this morning, may I challenge you. Pray to be rehabilitated fully, completely, without any condition. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. No slave mentality. Some of us have been slaves long enough. Amen. You have been suffering for way too long. Isn't it time to have a bold prayer and then come in the presence of the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. The word says, you will be blessed and you will not be cursed. The word says, you will prosper and succeed. Hallelujah. Your situation today may not be good. Maybe you are sick and the medical report is saying something that is not good. The word of God says, I will restore your health. Brothers and sisters, do I have anybody who is sick? The altar is open. You have to walk into God's home for you to get the healing. The prodigal son just walked home. This is it. If you have a family member who is sick, walk to the altar. 
is a sign, prophetic sign of coming home. I am coming home for my healing. I am coming home for my blessing. I am coming home, God, so that you touch me. Hallelujah. You may be sick, but God says, I will restore you fully and completely. Would you come home? You may be, you may have a terminal disease or you may have, you may know a person who has a terminal disease. But God says, the numbers of your day, I will fulfill. Hallelujah. I pray for you or for a family member who is suffering with anything. God is saying, the numbers of your day, I will fulfill. Hallelujah. You, have went, you went through disappointment. You went through rejection. Hallelujah. Maybe you were not chosen if you were the person who was qualified. You are suffering in you because of that. All the time when I apply, I do not get the position. It's someone else who has the position. God says, I will give you beauty for those ashes. Do not worry about the ashes. God will give you beauty for those ashes. Situations happen. They have happened. But God will restore you with beauty. Hallelujah. The situation you have been has been unfair. Unfair at work. Unfair in your family. Unfair in everything you have been dealing with. Hallelujah. This morning, I pray for a double a, du a double blessings. Yes. I said I pray for a double blessing. Yes. The unfair situation will change into a double blessing. Yes. Hallelujah. For all the unfair situations you have been going through, for all the disease, all the things that are not working well, today you have a fiancé, tomorrow he marries someone else. For all this unfair situation, I pray for double blessing. Double blessing to you. Hallelujah. It takes you to walk back home. It takes you to dream. Hallelujah. You may have dreams that are impossible. Hallelujah. But God this morning is saying, I will chase you down. God's blessings will chase you down. Hallelujah. Today is a day, fathers, to take the limit of God. I know we men, we want to work, we want to earn anything we want to prove that we can do something take the limit of god hallelujah take the limit of god hallelujah i'm going to stop the service right now because we are out of time and i think the kids have small gifts for that so i do not want to take that away we have to uh, give the time for the kids to express their love to the fathers Hallelujah. When we're done with that, I will come back to pray and close the service. So if the kids are ready, I want to leave the space for them. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Fathers, are you happy? It's your day. If you're not happy, you will wait until next year. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you, my brother. Thank you. Let, let the kid come and so we finish this. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Amen, amen. Cause my brother, cause my sister today to realize that they just have to walk toward the house they just have to stand up humiliate themselves humble themselves ask for forgiveness and walk toward the house lord because you are on the watch you will see them hallelujah today lord i pray that you touch my brother whatever he has been involved in lord your grace is sufficient lord would you touch my brother today lord he has probably pray praying to be just a slave in your house because he does not think he merits anything that you are and that you have, Lord, for him. But today you will touch him. You will show him that your love is unconditional, Lord. You will restore my brother.
back to your initial intent, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Restore him right now. Restore my brother in his, his finances. Restore him in his health in the name of Jesus. Give him, Lord, without counting, Lord. He has made the first step to come to you. Would you complete the 99 steps that are missing, Lord, and come to embrace him, come to restore him, come to clothe him again, Lord. Hallelujah. In this day of Father's Day, Lord, remember all the fathers that are struggling, all the fathers that are stressed because kids have become rebellious. Some have left the house thinking they know better. They know better, hallelujah. Cause the parents to love their kids regardless of the situation, to continue to pray for the kids and to be on the watch for them, Lord. Because one day you will cause the kids to come home, Lord. Make the father to be the one seeing the child on his way back home from afar, Lord, so he could go embrace, pardon, and rehabilitate the child fully, completely, unconditionally. Hallelujah. Make this day memorable. Make this day a day where the fathers will connect with all the children, with all the family members. Cause the fathers to understand that without them, the house will crumble and will go down because they are the foundation, Lord. Foundation of the house, Lord. Strengthen all the fathers that are here to understand their mission and what they, they have been designed for, called for, equipped for. Those who are not equipped or those who do not think they are equipped enough, I pray that God extends his mercy to you, extends his love to you, and touches you, changes you, and transforms you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Happy Father's Day. Amen. I think children, children, oh, children, come. Yeah, just come. Have small gifts for the fathers. 